Hey everybody, welcome back to Jeffco Builds, your source for stuff built by guys named Jeff. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be working on planar heaters today. We've got the Binar 5S, which is a liquid heater that's going to run the cooling loop of the truck's uh, engine coolant system. It's also going to run into the hot water heater and uh, it will be able to preheat the engine as well as preheat the domestic water for showers, washing dishes, things like that. So I got that installed yesterday. I didn't video it because it was a pain in the butt to install, to be completely honest. But I got that one figured out. I learned a lot from it. So I think that the air heater is gonna be a good one to video and you guys can kind of see how these things function. They actually work really good. Setup is pretty easy. And once you get it up and running, really the biggest problem is bleeding the fuel lines and then they, they work pretty flawlessly. So we'll go ahead and get going with getting this uh, air heater installed and come along for the ride. So this is the view from the bottom and you can see I've got the exhaust pipe attached, which just uses a standard hose clamp pretty much. And then this is our fuel line and over here is our air intake. This cage that's around this thing, which measures uh, about three and a half inches. This is for passing through a floor that's pretty thick and it was an accessory that I bought in addition to the heater. So if you're gonna floor mount this, this little plate, this little backer plate, I would highly recommend because you get all this width to pass through without having any heat transfer into your floor, especially if you're running a combustible floor, which most people are. So what we're doing now is we're pre plumbing this, we're getting our air intake installed, we're getting our fuel line installed, and we're gonna go ahead and get our exhaust finished up before we drop it down through the floor because this stuff's a lot easier to do when it's upside down facing you like this than it would be sitting under the truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. No horses. Why? Because I'm videoing this right now. Okay, so now we've got our exhaust line, we've got our air intake, and over here, this little fella, we got our fuel line run. The next thing we're gonna do is take this sheath, which is uh, fiberglass insulation. We're gonna slide this over our exhaust pipe, and that's gonna help insulate it from our plastic intake pipe. So we'll run this insulation all the way down as deep as we can, and then we'll actually invert this thing, put it through the floor, and then we can start the hookups from below. So what I did here is I actually cut a notch in that insulation so that way it'll wrap around that clamp and sit tighter to the base, giving us more protection for our airline. Just like that. All right, so from under the truck, I've got, this is my exhaust line right here, and I'm gonna be running my air line, which is my air intake, running to the outside of the truck. That way I can easily cap it if I'm driving down a really muddy terrain or something and I don't have the heater running, I'd like to be able to cap that so I don't get a bunch of dirt and grit into it. But I think I'm gonna run the exhaust back towards under the truck, and I think I can utilize this exhaust hanger right here. Now the reason I'm okay with running it under the truck is because I've already run the Binar heater and I don't think it's gonna to be too hot. It 
produces a hot off gas, but it's not as smoky, it's not as uh, intense as I would have thought. So I think this would be a good location. This was a factory exhaust hanger, and I think I'll hook this guy right here onto this factory exhaust hanger, and then plumb him right in, and then I'll probably do a turnout that'll go back down with the grain of the chassis to keep, uh, as you're driving forward, it'll keep stuff from getting Venturi affected right into the exhaust muffler. I had to change the orientation of this exhaust to flat like this because it was running into my air um, my air cleaner extractor so I went ahead and used one of the supplied angle brackets and I can mount this thing to the side but still allows for good flexibility and range of motion Well, I got my head in a precarious position. I'm going to use this uh, hose clamp and I'm going to go ahead and hose clamp the insulating jacket onto the exhaust so it doesn't slide down. Oh man, it's snug in here, let me tell you. I'm just putting this right over top of the jacket that we slid on before we dropped the heater in. And now I'm just tightening down that hose clamp. And this hose clamp is going to hold the jacket so it doesn't fall and uh, pull away from that air intake. Because that's what we're trying to protect is that air intake. So got that done. So now we're going to go ahead... All right, now the connection for the exhaust itself, which is this guy. Maybe if it goes on, it's tight. Okay, so that into there, shazam. I want to make sure that this points down slightly that way we've got drainage if uh, condensation or anything gets in there at least it'll come out rather than resting on our muffler and I'm just gonna turn this back it's about I don't know six inches away from my exhaust of the truck so that's perfectly fine I think and I think this is gonna work There we go. Exhaust mounted. I threw a little gooseneck in this exhaust here. That way, as the body flexes on the truck, because we only have hard connection on the back of the box, the front is on springs, so it can flex. So as this habitat flexes, I've, I've left a couple inches here of extra exhaust pipe that should expand and contract um, and allow the body to flex without ripping our muffler off. All right, here's the fuel connection I just ran. Comes up this line, goes into the pump, and then out to the tank. Now these are supposed to be mounted horizontally with only a five degree tip to them, but they provide this rubber mount that allows it to move a lot. So I think I'm actually gonna silicone that rubber mount into place, that way it won't tip too much. But that there is the fuel pump. Okay, so this is our fuel connections 
for both the diesel and the air heater. As you can see, I got both the lines hooked up already and the dip tubes that run down into the tank. Now this one up here is for the air heater, or excuse me, this one is for the liquid heater, this one is for the air heater. And the way that I installed these was I actually took the cap off and I took a small cup and I held a cup under where I was drilling and then I used the other hand to drill my holes um, and catch all the shavings so I didn't contaminate my fuel system. So that's an easy way. You got to keep them close to the fill cap though if you're going to do it that way but that was my preference. I thought it was easy and this was a nice flat spot to mount. So once I had the holes drilled you drop the dip tubes in, you cut them to length and then you're supposed to put like a 45 degree chamfer on your cut that way if it's touching the bottom it won't suck to the bottom and not pull fuel so this is the fuel system all right so we went ahead and we got the rest of the electrical wrapped up we got all the connectors put together which is very simple just plug and play it's all pre-loomed pre-wired so i'm not even going to take you through those steps but I got it hooked up. I got it hooked up to the touchscreen monitor. I got my 12 volt power source and I got everything uh, zip tied up nice and tidy. So now we're gonna go ahead and purge the system with the fuel and try to get some diesel up to the pump or up to the heater through the pump. And once we've got that done, then hopefully this thing will fire up. I currently have the AC running in here to get the temperature cold enough for the heater to recognize that it needs to start running. So. For testing purposes, I have the AC on full blast as well. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing on and we'll go from there. The display screen, and you can see we've got our current temperature, our current voltage, you know, it's got clock and all that. These are settings up here to go from Fahrenheit Celsius, things like that, timer. So if you wanna preset timers on this unit, and then we just click it and then we can scroll our temperature cooler or warmer. I went ahead and I set it to 84 degrees and it's currently showing 77 degree temperature in here. So it's going to go ahead and try to kick the try to kick the heater on. So we're going to wait and see if that actuates and if we actually start getting some heat pumped. So this is what the heater sounds like running on full blast. Relatively quiet. So that concludes the install of the Planar air heater and a couple cool things that we did with that to make it function a little bit better. I'll turn the camera so you can see. Is we went ahead and I used some uh, ducting that is a three inch interior port dimension with this fiberglass insulation and this foil facing on it. And that is actually going to cover all the way from our heater to our outlet port here. And what that's going to do is try to keep that heat where it belongs and not let it come over to our inverter too much. And right now we've got about an inch and a half of clearance here, which isn't a ton, but I think it's enough. And then another thing that I did to make this, uh, work even a little bit better is over here let me get a light here so you can see a little better over here I added a duct now this duct isn't doing much all it does is allow fresh air in over here well when the cover is on top of this floor it's gonna essentially be sealed there's not gonna be a lot of airflow so that vent there will give us airflow and then I can actually turn this unit on without heating just on fan mode. So I can pull a draft through the whole compartment here. So if this guy's making a lot of heat and it's a hot summer day, I can turn the fan mode on on this and pull cool air through all of my electronics and then back into the intake, which is on the back side here, and then back through out the port. So pretty neat there. And uh, it was a good install. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And that is it for the Planar air heater. All right, so now for a little bit of bonus content. Um, along with the air heater today, I did install the, I finished wiring the DC to DC charger, and I also got my ARB air compressor installed. So let's hop up here and I'll show you what that looks like. 
So here's my compressor unit, which I installed inverted under one of the boxes here that are a factory mount with the 1079. And then I've got three different things. I've got my quarter inch airline, I've got my main power feed in, and then this smaller plug here is actually the switch power. So that comes down and it's loomed in with my Binar heater. So this is my liquid heater. This is the air intake for it. Um, this is the exhaust for it. And then these are the cooling lines which run to the engine, the hot water heater, and that's it. So um, those are all our cooling lines. And then all this stuff is loomed together nicely and penetrates down here, which runs back into the cab. So overall, pretty nice little install. This Binar heater is really cool too. So I'm, I actually like that more than the air heater just because it uh, keeps my engine warm, which is important and gives me hot water. So got that, got that, and that concludes it. So um, really just want to thank you guys as I'm falling. I want to thank you for viewing. Please like the channel. Please subscribe. Let me know that you like the content, and I'll keep it coming. Until next time, I'm Jeff Coe. This is my build.